This is uh, an old signal generator that I've been given. It's an advanced signal generator type E model 2. It has six frequency ranges uh, covering from 100 kilohertz to 100 megahertz and uh, as you can see it's in a bit of a state. It's uh, I think it's had a, a reasonably hard life but it, uh, it, it seems to be full of faults and um, I just thought I'd go through some of these. I haven't got to the bottom of it yet. Um, I have got it oscillating uh, but I, I'll, I'll just illustrate some of the issues that I've had with this piece of equipment. And once I got the equipment open I realized it's uh, quite a nicely made unit and uh, uh, good attention paid to uh, screening. In fact uh, this case um, fits into uh, the outer case which has uh, a series of uh, spring-loaded um, metal fingers that uh, clench uh, this edge on both sides so good screening uh, this uh, nut tightens onto the back of the outer case so again it's actually bonding uh, the back of the case to the box and uh, the screens throughout and uh, chokes on the uh, the mains input and uh, the capacitors there. Uh, none of the components looked as though they've been uh, altered although there are evidence of people being in here there's uh, uh, it looks like this has been desoldered I imagine that's uh, holding that uh, that lid to the to the front that's over a potentiometer and uh, the numbers of the valves have been written on here. Um, so it, it clearly, uh, I'm not the first person to look at this. I'll just turn it over. So looking at the top of the uh, equipment from behind, again there's another screen box that houses the oscillator, then there's the rectifier valve and the uh, modulator. Uh, the frequency can be AF modulated. A uh, little pilot lamp was uh, smashed. Uh, when I opened it. But again, uh, loads of screws holding the case. Uh, the, these screws are sort of every inch and a half. So um, wonderful detail uh, to screening and uh, that, that carries on round the side. This is uh, looking into the oscillator section there and the little oscillator valve is here. So just moving in a little closer on the oscillator section. Uh, everything looks quite clean. There's only one soldered joint that looks as though it's had a, a soldering iron taken to it. Um, so uh, it, it'll be worth getting the circuit diagram. Uh, I was very pleased to find the um, uh, manual and circuit diagram on the internet and the uh, first thing I did was go to the circuit diagram and uh, check the valve line up. The circuit information that I have says that the oscillator should be a um, then that's V1 should be an ECC 82, and uh, the valve that was in there uh, I can't read the uh, all of the characters on, but it uh, it looks like something 59, so clearly not the right valve. So um, I started uh, looking a bit deeper, and uh, then I actually found out that the, the circuit diagram has been redrawn and unfortunately it's got the wrong valve in it uh, where it says it's an ECC82 in actual fact it's an ECC91 um, they're actually different valve sizes um, but uh, that led me a dance anyway I've uh, been able to acquire uh, an ECC91 and uh, by the way, when I uh, when I read through this uh, um, specification, as I should have done to start with, um, it clearly states in the specification uh, that valve one is a, an ECC91. So I'm extremely grateful to have uh, got the circuit diagram, um, but uh, let's say just because it's uh, there, it doesn't necessarily mean to say that it's going to tell you the whole truth. So after doing all of the usual checks and fitting the correct oscillator valve um, I powered it up and uh, I found that uh, I couldn't get any 
uh, any oscillation out of the equipment at all and I was uh, checking it via the um, lead that came with the equipment. Uh, this is the lead that came with the equipment and um, you can see this plug has got this extended nose on and these sockets uh, are very good as it means the uh, the actual uh, active uh, part of the socket is deep in there so again in terms of RF screening very good and this looks like uh, a 75 ohm coax uh, plug but um, I didn't realize at first that this wasn't making connection it wasn't going in far enough and um, uh, I get a scope reading on the other side of the socket but I uh, don't know if you can catch this I'll get a still but this is uh, looks like a, something that's homemade it's been filed here and uh, that simply wasn't going in far enough this uh, part of the body was metal down to here so that would only go in uh, about a quarter of an inch so I've just quickly put that in the lathe and uh, turned off another uh, three or four millimeters so now it, it goes in um, because I'm in a and I want to get this thing working uh, but now it fits in uh, but again uh, another little thing that gets in the way I found I sometimes got a signal on the other side of the socket but I hadn't got anything on the lead yet it felt tight everything was right it's simply that nose wasn't going in because it's it's a homemade plug anyway uh, that is resolved for the time being so now I've moved on to the next uh, issue so I've got the correct valve in the oscillator and um, I'm checking out the voltages they look something like uh, the manual except there's no uh, drive on the grid of the oscillator valve so that's a, a good indication that it's not oscillating and then uh, I found occasionally it, it burst into oscillation when I uh, worked the, uh, light, uh, the frequency change switch and um, the, uh, the low frequencies came into life first and um, then uh, occasionally the higher frequencies would come in so uh, I used um, uh, some WD-40 on the switch and uh, that's a tip I've picked up from uh, Rick McWhirter on uh, the All-American 5 radio uh, site and uh, details are uh, in the description of, uh, of this video for, for Rick's site and uh, sure enough the uh, the switch is cleaned up and the higher uh, frequencies have, have come into uh, operation but I've still got a problem with the uh, 100 meg range and that's what's prompted to prompted me to make this video because uh, there seems to be an intermittent fault or a microphonic fault and uh, I don't think it's the valve um, so I thought I'd, I'd trace it through, but I'd, uh, I'd video it and um, just see where, if I can uh, capture the, the moment on camera. So I've got the oscilloscope connected to the output of the generator, and I've got the uh, generator onto on the 30 to 100 meg range. And if you look at the trace there, you'll see that's. I don't know if you can see it actually dip in there, but it's a, a microphonic fault. And that is, you know, you get the impression if you could shout at it, so you could you could see the modulation there. Um, if the valve was microphonic, I would expect to to see that there, but it, it's not the valve. I'm a little bit drawn to the capacitor there, the variable capacitor. But so what I've got is a little brush, and I'll, I'll go around and I'll tap it, and when I think I've I'm in the right place, uh, then I'll um, uh, I'll start brushing, and make, maybe I'll find a, a poor connection somewhere. 
as the man said, I could be some time. Now I'm definitely drawn to this area here. Operating the switch, just teasing the switch, isn't making any difference. And if it was a microphonic switch, oh, that's, that's really going to the next range. I'm just touching the. Um, uh, frequency uh, change the uh, the capacitor the variable capacitor just dialing up a different frequency in that. I'm actually thinking it might be this the uh, the sliding contact on the capacitor we're talking at very low voltages in this area. Oscillators are uh, notoriously difficult to deal with as uh, either a short circuit or an open circuit will stop them from working. Um, so uh, at least here I've got a starting point, the oscillator is, uh, is doing something. Need a bigger hammer I think. I've been banging around here now for quite some time and uh, I've kind of come to the conclusion that uh, this capacitor is very very sensitive it's definitely not the valve I would have liked it to have been the valve I could deal with that quite easily and it's a nice, nice thing to to see. It definitely seems to be the stator of that capacitor. I'm just touching the capacitor uh, um, mechanism at the back and just the slightest, slightest thing. There's of course a rapid change of frequency in the capacitor to uh, also give me that uh, issue. Okay, I've, um, I've cleaned the, uh, the contacts, the sliding contacts of the capacitor with uh, a bit of WD-40 and, uh, and a feather, which funnily enough uh, is the same feather that I, ch uh, I sh showed you in the previous video, uh, coming useful. Um, and now that problem has gone away. Uh, it was definitely the contacts to the stator of the variable capacitor. Never had that before, but uh, uh, there's just a little bit of the... So, a uh, bit of WD-6, a bit of uh, WD-40. Uh, thanks for that one, Rick. Um, okay, hope you found that interesting and uh, hopefully helpful. Uh, I have. I've also found I've got a microphonic fault on my uh, uh, oscilloscope, so it looks like I've got to clean the switch of that as well. Thanks for watching, guys.